now that we know that what is the reducibility relation, we can now discuss how the different failure detectors are related. So, um, if you remember, we have um, four failure detectors with strong completeness. We have the perfect detector, strong accuracy, if you detect um, a process and it has crashed. And we have strong detector S, which says that um, one process is, is very well connected, so that one uh, can never suspect this process, it's a correct process. And then we have the two variants, which are eventual perfect detector, which has eventually strong accuracy. And we have the eventually strong detector, which eventually weak accuracy. These are the four main established uh, failure detectors. Then we have four more with weak completeness. And just to remind you again of weak completeness, for each process that crashed, there will exist at least one process that will detect that crash. Okay? And the four detectors, we just go through them quickly. Detector Q with strong accuracy, detector W with weak accuracy, and then the eventual version of these two. Very good. Now, let us look to uh, the relationship now between all these eight failure detectors. We start with a strong one, strong, strongly complete one. So we know that diamond P, eventual, P is always reducible to P. P is always strongly accurate, and thus it is always eventually strongly accurate. So that is fine. And this is, this is the picture that we see here. The same thing happens between uh, diamond S, the strong and eventually strong failure detectors. So S is, again, is always weakly accurate, and thus it is also eventually weakly accurate. So we get this one, we get this relation, which this one is, diamond S is reducible to S. Right, good. Now we know also that if we have P, we can implement uh, a strong uh, failure detector because P is always strongly accurate and therefore it is also weakly accurate. Very good. In the same manner, also diamond S is reducible to P. With the same way, we can also look to the weak complete failure detectors and we can get the same hierarchy okay as you can see here so this is the same hierarchy omega diamond q is reducible to p diamond q is reducible to p diamond w is reducible to w and the case also that w is reducible Q because Q is always strongly accurate. That's also even. That's uh, also weakly accurate. Okay, and the same thing. So we have covered this, this, this. We can also the same thing holds good. What do we have now? We have our property strong and weak completeness at one side of this matrix and or this table, and the accuracy here. And now what we are going to look at and show, we will show that completeness is irrelevant. And by this, we will mean that if you have a system of a failure detector, which is weakly complete, then it is also strongly complete. It means that strong completeness can be reduced to weak complete. First of all, let us take the other uh, step first, which is... Weak completeness is trivially reduced to strong completeness, of course. That's not an issue. And so weak completeness is strong to is reducible to weak to weak completeness is trivially reduced to strong completeness. And the other thing is strong completeness is reducible to weak completeness. I.e. we can get the strong completeness from a weak complete. So it means P 
can be reduced to Q, S can be reduced to W, and the other eventual version. So, so we have this relationship now, right? P can reduce, okay. I mean, which means that these are equivalent. That's what we... So let us see, let us see how we can prove that strong completeness is reducible to weak completeness. Okay, so now we're talking about the strong completeness property. So what is strong, what is weak completeness again? It says that every crash is eventually detected by some correct process. This is the property of weak completeness. So, so we assume we have a system with a weak uh, complete failure detector and then we use it to implement the following. It's a very simple idea. Every node Q broadcast suspicions periodically. So the suspicion, these are the nodes that Q broadcasts. And whenever a node receives a set of suspicion from Q, it adds the set to its set of suspicions and it makes sure that Q is not in that set. So, sending Q works like a heartbeat. Now, remember that these failure detectors of this system, every node is weakly complete, but it has its own property of the system. So, the system has strong accuracy, so every node is strongly accurate. If the system, the failure detectors are weakly accurate, then every node is weakly accurate okay just to remember by doing this every crash is eventually detected by all correct p so because if q detects one process that crashed after it broadcasted to everybody else will also detect that but the issue is now can this violate violate the accuracy property this is the issue and that's what we are going to see in the next slide maintaining accuracy. So the claim is strong, strong and weak accuracy are not violated. Let us look to strong accuracy. Remember when a node, so we assume now that every node has a strong accuracy. Therefore, whenever it broadcasts its list of suspicion, it, it is not accurate. So nobody is accurate. So the information propagating the system is no is is actually does not spread inaccurate suspicions. What about weak accuracy? Everyone is accurate about at least one node. And again, when you spread that information, you will still be accurate about that node. So no one will spread inaccurate information about that node, a node that is well connected. By the same reasoning, also eventually strong and eventual weak accuracy are not violated. Okay, so the proof is more or less the same. So what we, did we decide now? What did we know? We know that given that you have weak completeness, you also have strong completeness. These two properties are equivalent according to our reduction reducibility relation or reduction mechanism. This gives us the very nice picture now that we are going to have that we have now added these links in the relationship between different failure detectors which the double line link is defines the um, equivalence and the single arrow is the reducibility relation. Very good. Now let us take one more step and look to Omega. Omega is our eventual leader election. We know that Omega is also a failure detector. We said that. So the question that we want to raise now is, can we implement eventually strong failure detector with Omega? So the question we raise is the following. We have here is an eventually 
strong failure detector. And the question, can we implement this with Omega? That is what is written here. Hmm. So this is, is easy because remember that eventually strong failure detector means there is one node that is well connected and never suspected. So, so we suspect all nodes except the leader given by omega. If we do that, what will happen? If we suspect all nodes except the leader, we will get from omega eventual completeness because all nodes are suspected except the leader, which is correct. And we will get eventual accuracy because eventually one correct node is not suspected by anyone. One correct node is not suspected by anyone, and that is a property of eventually strong uh, failure detector. So thus, we know now that diamond S is reducible to omega. So the next is, can we show that omega is equivalent to diamond S? Put it in another way, we have already shown that diamond S is reducible to omega. Can we show that omega is reducible to diamond S? Can we show that when we use diamond S, we can implement omega? Okay, that is the question. So there is an interesting result. It's called this, you can look it to the, in the literature, uh, Chandra and Azar and Tuweg. Um, and the result says, if a consensus, you know, consensus is, is a problem of agreeing between processes that we are going to look to its implementation later in this course. So if consensus is implementer with a failure detector, then omega can be implemented using the failure detector. So if, if you hear consensus is implemented by a failure detector, then what? Then omega is implemented using that failure detector. So this is interesting result. We are going to show in this course that in fact consensus, we're going to show an implementation of consensus using eventually strong failure detector. Therefore, now we can say that omega is implementable using eventually strong failure detector. Um, so that is that. In fact, any D that can implement consensus, any D that can implement consensus, here, a D that can implement, it also can implement, can implement eventually strong failure detector, which implies that eventually strong failure detector is the weakest because it can be implemented by any other failure detector that implements consensus. Okay? It's the weakest failure detector that can implement consensus. So this is, should be clear. So if you go and look at our picture, here is the picture that we have now. So what we have is this interesting, this part of the picture that we also now we can relate omega to the other failure detectors in our system. This really ends the, the description of the relationship between different failure detectors and also with the interesting results that eventually strong is the weakest failure detector that will be able to implement agreement abstractions like consensus and it is equivalent to omega. Now in the rest of this course we are going to work with different systems or and we will do that by combining different abstractions we are going to so one some algorithm will assume what we call a fail stop model a fail stop model will use a crash stop process model which is can only stop perfect links and perfect failure detectors and what this implies, what? Implies that we are working in 
a synchronous model. Normally, these are the most easiest, if we assume a synchronous model, and we can find very easy, quite often very easy algorithm to implement the abstraction we're trying to um, find an implementation for, if the abstraction is consensus and others. Then once we have um, another type of uh, abstraction that we are going to try to find algorithms to implement abstraction under the assumption of fail silent. A fail silent is a system that cannot assume anything about time, it has no failure detector, it's a crash stop with perfect link. This is typically an asynchronous system. The fail noisy model is a model where we have a crash stop process model, perfect link again, but an eventually perfect failure detector. So this is, you can understand that this is a partially synchronous model. And a fail recovery is a crash recovery process model. And sometimes we use some failure detectors, but sometimes we don't. We could use failure detectors in this model, depending on the underlying system. So these are the four underlying distributed system model that we are going to work to find algorithms in this model to solve a certain problem or to implement a certain abstraction. This is the easiest one. This is more difficult one. There are even other difficult one which has to do with Byzantine models that we just mentioned before, arbitrary crash models. But this we're not going, to, not going to discuss now, but we are going to discuss it in the course. So in the rest of this course, we are going to assume a crash stop system with perfect failure detector. And, it is, and then we try to implement a certain abstraction. Once we have done that, we try to make a weaker assumption and find an algorithm that implements the abstraction at hand that we are discussing. Thank you.